Recall from last video, we have eight primitive types. Each has an individual wrapper class associated with them. So for this video, we will talk about the first four, which are integer, byte, short, and long. So all these four represent the integer numbers. So what are the difference between them? Actually, their difference is the memory it takes and the range of number it can store. For example, byte can only store numbers between negative 128 to 127. So anything smaller than negative 128 or larger than 127 cannot be stored in the byte. So that's the range for short, int, and long. So why don't we use long all the time since it can store a larger number? The reason is the memory it takes is larger. So usually we use int to store smaller numbers and we use long to store very long numbers. So I don't think the byte and short is being used very often since they can only store really, really small numbers. So usually we just use int and long. So now we will go to our compiler to see how we use them. So here I just created a new project for this demo. And as mentioned previously, in order to declare a primitive type, we have something like type space variable we want to name it to, and space equal space the value we want to assign it to. And now, since we're talking about the int, int, byte, short, and long, so these four, int, byte, short, and long, are the types. And usually, we use int and long. So let's do some example. For example, if we want to declare a variable called x, and we want to assign some value to it, first, we we'll have to type the type, which is int space. And then we're given a variable name that's x space equal to space, let's say 12. So this means like we assign number 12 to the x. And actually we can print it out by using the system out the print. So system out that print line, and here we don't use the quotation mark x because if we do this, we're actually printing the x. So in order to print the number stored in the x, we can do system dot out the print line x without the quotation marks, and so we can combine these two lines by adding, is adding a plus sign. So for example, system.out.println x. So this prints the actual x, the letter x. So we can say plus x. So here, it's something interesting. We have the letter x and plus the x. So this will show both the letter x and the x is stored. So let's see. Now we'll have x and 12. However, the plus sign is not been printed. So in order to print the plus sign, we'll have to add it in the quotation marks. So x space plus x. So now we have x plus 12. If we want to have the equal sign, we can do x equal to 12. And here it is. So everything we want to print it, we have to write in the quotation marks. But if we want to print the value stored in the variable, we don't have to write the quotation marks. We can just write the variable name itself and we can combine them with a plus sign. 
As mentioned previously, each primitive data type has it has their own wrapper class. So for it, it has a wrapper class called integer. And for the wrapper class, it contains some useful data and methods associated with the primitive data type. For example, we can use integer to check what's the minimum and maximum volume integer can store. So just give you an example. We can name int the variable name called min volume. So this is, we can name it anything we want and equal to integer. So that's the wrapper class with a dot. And we can select min volume. And we can also check the maximum volume int max volume equal to integer dot max volume. And we can check them by printing them out system dot out dot print line min volume equal to plus min volume and also plus quotation marks comma and max volume equal to plus max volume. However, we notice that this line is really long. If we don't want to print everything in one line, we can actually break it down into two lines. So we just hit enter. And now it becomes two lines and still it serves as one line as long as we don't have the semicolon in the end. If I have semicolon, that means this line is over and that's a new beginning. But if we don't, they will treat these two lines as one. And now we can check the result. Min volume equal to a negative number and max volume equal to a positive number. Recall that the number we showed in the previous slide for the minimum and maximum number. So what happened if we have something larger than this number? Let's check it out. Int, we can give it name, let's say y equal to. So we copy this number and replace the last digit to eight semicolon. Now we see there's a right underline here. So, and we can see integer number too large. So we can't do this. That's beyond the maximum number we can store. So let's comment this out. And there are also some interesting features we can see. For example, we have system that out that print line. What happened if we don't have the quotation mark x plus a number, let's say 12, we'll have a number plus another number. Let's say if we have x plus 12, this will not print x plus 12, but it actually will do the calculation x plus 12 first and then print the result. So let's check. See, it prints 24. So it do the calculation first and then prints out the result. So here, this is the exercise I want you guys to do. So I want you guys to use the same thing we did for integer to store the min and maximum value for the byte and short. And just like this, I want you guys to print them out and give you a hint. The primitive data type for byte is byte and the wrapper class is capitalized B, byte. And for short, this is the primitive data type and that's the wrapper class. So now you can pause the video and try it on your own. And once you're finished, you can continue the video and check my solution. Okay. 
So I hope you guys figured out how to do it on your own. If not, it's also okay. So here's my solution. So as mentioned previously, for byte, the type name is also byte. And then we can give some variable name, byte min. So you don't have to name it exactly the same as mine. You can name it anything you want, as long as you follow the first word and the second word capitalize the first letter. And then we can assign it equal to the wrapper class byte dot min value. And then for the max value, byte byte max equal to the wrapper class dot max value. And then we can print it out. Let's say byte min plus the quotation marks and plus byte max. And it's the same thing for short. Short short min equal to the wrapper class is called short dot min value and short short max equal to short dot max value and also we can print them out short min plus quotation mark and plus short max now we can check the result here as we also mentioned previously, it's negative 128 and 127. That's the range we can store for byte. And that's the range we can store the numbers for short. So for long, it's the same thing. We can find the max, maximum number by using the same method long that max value and we can see the maximum volume the long can store is a really big number so let's name some other variable long let's say num equal to 2 and this looks fine if we print it out it will give us number two. However, let's say we have another num, num two, equal to, let's have the max value of the integer plus one. Let's have this. Oh, what happened? It gave us an arrow. An arrow. Is its integer number too large? But we're having long here. So what happened? Actually, on the right side, this number is still treated as an integer. And it will do some casting to, to the long, to store in the long. But since it's an integer, it cannot store anything larger than this number. So this will give us an error. So don't worry about the casting for now. We will talk about it when we finish the primitive data types. And for now, there's one way to store numbers larger than this. The solution is we add a dial in the end. So now we're seeing like this number is a long. So let's store it as a long. And now we're able to print it and use it. So let's see. Yep, now it works. So don't worry about the calculation and casting for now. So once we've finished the eight primitive data types, we will go over how to do the casting and do the calculation. So for the next video, we will talk about the rest of the four primitive data types, which are double flow, character, and boolean.